я думаю, один з найкращих спогадів це може бути, як сестра Вора нас вчила співати. Молоді, хлопчиська, дівчата не знали, як співати, але все ж таки сестра нас везла на різні концерти. Я навіть пам'ятаю, один з найкращих концертів це був різдвяний концерт в Калені Центр. Навіть маю пару знімок з тої оказії. Люди підходили до нас після того, як ми співали наші українські колядки. Чудово, як ми співали, казали, що дуже по-культурному, а після того співали англійські, американські такі колядки. Це один з найкращих спогадів, що я маю з дитинства. Вернувшися з школи від сестер Василиянок, я була зобов'язана допомогти нашим сестрам, Василиянкам, які провадили нашу парохіальну школу. Все їх питалося, чим можу допомагати. Вони лише чекали, щоб трошки діти підросли. І тоді попросили мене, щоб я їм допомогла з садочком перед шкіллям. Отже, погодилася я вчити на один рік. Після того, як привикла я вже до дітей, а діти до мене, і я згодилася далі продовжувати. Так вчила шість років перед шкілля, а потім почала вчити вже в вищі школи, вчила п'яту, шосту, тому що то були Лучені класи в сьому і осьму. Вчила українську мову і допомагала в підготуванні концертів, які давала наша парохіальна школа. It's kind of difficult, I think, being the child of an immigrant at times, too, because you're caught between two cultures. You're caught between the culture of your parents and where they came from and the one you're living in, and somehow you have to adjust to the two. Ukrainian was the prime language. We didn't, we're not allowed to speak English in the house. And we always had to speak Ukrainian in, at home. And uh, of course, uh, I can remember one time, um, <laughs> uh, I called my father, Dad, and he says, you have to be dumb, Dad. You have to be taught on that, Dad. He didn't understand what Dad was, you know. I remember, too, the, uh, um, the church traditions, the, you know, the uh, uh, religious traditions, the, I guess, cultural traditions, the Easter eggs and the, uh, the blessing of the food um, for Easter. And at Christmas time, I remember the priest coming to the house for Christmas Eve and blessing the house with going through the house with the uh, um, incense. Um, we used to wait for that, the, the nice smell of the incense throughout the house for Christmas Eve dinner. Um, and the processions and things that we used to have, uh, especially at Easter time. I remember, to me, it seemed as if I was getting up in the middle of the night, but I'm sure it wasn't that early. <clears throat> To have my, my hair had to be curled and we had to have, you know, the uh, First Communion dresses and come and process down the aisle. And the church looked so big to me when I was a little kid. And I go in there now and I say, gee, it's not that big anymore. It, it does follow uh, uh, a particular order, uh, you know, certainly starting with uh, when uh, Father begins the uh, you know the liturgy with uh, you know blessed is is, is the kingdom uh, to through uh, all the prayers the uh, the antiphons uh, the tropars the conducts uh, you know leading up to the readings of the epistle and the gospel uh, the Nicene Creed. Uh, Rubik uh, hymn, uh, you know, through to where, uh, you know, uh, uh, communion and uh, uh, the dismissal. 
one of the things is that our liturgy has remained virtually unchanged for over a thousand years. And uh, you look at the Latin Rite, for example, and there have been tremendous changes in the Latin Rite uh, since Vatican II to where it, it, it changed drastically and uh, isn't anything like it was maybe 40 to, to 50 years ago. But uh, the liturgy in the Ukrainian church has really not changed since uh, 988 when we received Christianity. My typical day, 4 o'clock in the morning, getting up uh, in a cold day in April back in the 50s and knowing I was going to a three-hour Mass and I was going to serve and to be an altar boy at the Mass and to be driven to the church and still being dark. And uh, it, that added a mystery. You know, it's, it's beyond Santa Claus coming down the chimney and dropping gifts. And, you know, you get in there and you put on this magical costume and all these adult faces, these serious looking people come in that church in the far end. And, uh, you know, you look out that little window in the, in the sacristy, is that what they call it? And you open that window up and you see it just barely twilight and the church is full. And, and then there's just three hours of just unfolding smells and sounds and taste and visions and motions and walking around the church and clanking and voices from the from the choir. this higher choir and if a child is not affected by that uh the, the concept of brain dead is probably applied very easily at the point uh um, that really had an effect on me uh ritual has become something so important to my life uh for me ritual i've, I've almost stolen from the church and I've borrowed what ritual means and I've tried to find it in life itself. I try to find it in the in the, the passing of the year, the sun rising and the sun setting and it getting cold and it getting warm and it getting cold again. And Ultimately, I get to the point where I'm beginning to say, wait a minute, that's not Harry Orlick, that's not selfish. Again, there's something Ukrainian about that. It's something that means a lot to those people who live for generations over there. When I was 12 years old, I belonged to the church choir, which was a big church choir. And uh, like uh, the professor was very nice and he taught us a lot of things. And uh, we had a big, big church choir.